they're so good at blending in, guys. They're so, that's the thing. They're so good at blending in. I went on a training in Dallas um, and it was all these case studies, coaches, teachers, dads, brothers, girlfriends, cousins. And I'm like, ah, it's everyone. Stop listening to our instincts, we're in trouble. Our kids are in trouble, <laughs> we're in trouble. Our house isn't safe, we lock our door at night, right? But you know, if your kid's on their phone, what's the point? 13 year old middle school, that's the danger zone um, because that's the target. Um, and then I also tell our kids, you know, you might think the predator's looking out for you, but they're actually interested in your little brother or your little sister. We're still at 8,000 kids going missing a year in Nevada. That's a lot. So after today, hopefully we're feeling a little bit more energized just because you guys all look like amazing change makers, right? Awesome people in the building. All right, so we are Nevada Child Seekers. We obviously, what do you think we do? Right, we seek children, we try to find missing children. We've been around for over 30 years. We have about 8,000 missing children in one year in Nevada. That's more than 20 kids a day that go missing in Nevada. Our cases come from law enforcement calling us saying, hey, we have um, a case that we need you to send this e-alert on. Um, we have a case that we need you to spend extra time on. Um, they're overwhelmed, we know that, so they'll send us referrals, they'll send us families, we contact the family, we get the alert out, we activate the search force if we need to. Um, we contact the FBI, we contact the National Center for Missing Children, we get on the case. So we literally will do cyber forensics Social media is huge, um, we know that. That was a great answer. Our kids are being lured away from their home. The white van driving through the park is less than 1%. The stranger danger isn't even a real, um, it is a real statistic, but you can focus on the 0.5% when that happens, or we can focus on the 99.5%, which is the children actually walking away from their home to go meet someone. So instead of our message saying, don't talk to straight, we don't do that, we say, you're gonna be lured. Someone's gonna ask you to hang out with them. Someone's gonna say you're the most beautiful thing they've ever seen, which is the truth. This is what we tell them at the school. But if anyone wants to meet you or asks you to keep this friendship a secret, automatically think predator, right? Because anybody with the right intentions wouldn't wanna or need to be hidden from your family. That's saved over 45 kids in the past four years. We had disclosures where they said, oh my gosh, you came, or even they, they send us um, Instagram, they'll tag us and, you know, hey, Margarita, you came to my school, or they'll inbox us and, and tell us, this guy's liked, or this girl's liked all my pictures. I remember what you said. Um, they wanted uh, other pictures of me. I reported it to the cyber tip line. The cyber tip line is the FBI's child pornography hotline. So even if it's self-created, a lot, unfortunately, of our young people are making some decisions they can never take back. They think they're in love and they'll send a photo. Um, that's one of the biggest problems right now is self-made images or video. The cyber tip line will take those images down. They'll also, they have, um, like I say, cyber forensics, so they'll be able to find out where it's being housed or shared and then they'll go after that network or that group. And it's usually an, on, an online ring of file sharing um, predators who they'll file share. They'll share videos and images. Um, what's great about the FBI is we go straight to them and we report it. The kids do too. When we're out there talking to our young people, we let them know, hey, um, if you've made a mistake and you've accidentally sent a photo or a video that you regret, there is a way to protect yourself. You need to report it. Um, what happens is that FBI immediately, like I say, within 72 hours, they have a team on it. And it's really neat because here in Vegas, we have the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force that's actually located right down the street. So, yeah. So they pick up these cases way faster than the 72-hour rule. And they've been able to save a lot of kids because of it. Last year, I think they had 10 million images reported. So that gives you an idea of how much is out there. 
and um, how much is being removed, if you think about it, because they're the ones that investigate it and remove it and figure out where it's being um, shared. So this number was actually doubled because of our um, really neat partnerships with television. So we try, I'll well, send them bulletins every two weeks, <laughs> say, hey, have you thought about this topic? Or, you know, child safety bulletins, whether it's the internet or the new app that's out that the kids are using to chat secretly, things like that. We also do parent workshops. But it was actually, our cases were doubled because of the uh, media being able to share about our services, what we do, inviting our volunteers and our families on to talk about their experiences, um, whether it was a missing child case or uh, bullying, which is huge right now. A lot of our kids are going missing because of bullying. We have a bully prevention program called Be Brave where we inspire them. We talk about the difference between harassment, um, bullying, and then what just is normal life. People aren't always gonna like you, but if they're threatening you, it's absolutely bullying. And it doesn't have to happen more than once. If it's one huge threat that talks about you hurting yourself and that you know the world would be better without you, that's absolutely bullying needs to be reported. So it has a lot to do with the outreach because the number's still been 8,000 a year for the past five, six years with the, the statewide number. But our numbers have gone up, thankfully, because of things like this, just talking to people, communicating with the public and empowering you guys to make good choices and to inspire your kids to do the same. So our caseload statistics, this is from 2016. So we're able to close about 83. Close meaning child was found safe. Um, and they were either placed or they were given resources to continue rehabilitation or services in some sort. Open cases means we don't know where the child is, case remains open and it overflows to the following year. Um, even if a child turns 18, it doesn't matter, the child's gone missing, we will always keep their alert active, we will always contact the National Center for updates. Um, so it's really a lot of work but it's awesome because you, these are our babies, right? So. And I might call them my babies, but I tend to do that because they are. So here's something interesting that's happened over the last two years. Um, trafficking has gone up. And if you look at the blue, which was 2014, it was less than 50 cases. Um, now it's gone up to almost 150 of our 400 cases. Um, so the epidemic is real. I, right. Right, and mul some of these have multiple um, categories. So they might be a runaway that's involved with alcohol and traffic. So a lot of it may be overlapping. Um, truancy is a problem too, but people, just to give you an idea, a kid that runs away, let's say they're having bad grades, home life is good, but they're just having bad grades. This does happen um, right before Christmas, right before they get their report cards. Testings in January, we get a lot of the 24 hour I don't know where Timmy is. I just got his report card. He thinks he's in trouble. Um, we still activate our search force and we still send out the alert. We treat it just like we would anybody else. Um, so that's something that's interesting that it's, it's uh, not seasonal. It comes with the grades throughout the year. But the other ones, you know, this has a lot to do with abuse or gangs or alcohol or drugs. That's every day, all day, all throughout the year. Um, many of our missing child cases stem from multiple issues. Um, these statistics are solely based on our data. Okay, so this isn't a representative of Nevada. This is Nevada Child Seekers data. The fact that traffic is nearly tripled. So our babies are being lured online by predators. They think they love them. They think they're gonna go party with this wonderful person or it's a teacher or it's a coach. But the point is they're using the internet. So it's something we all have to be better about, especially if our children have phones or they have iPads or they're online or they have social media. Uh, we do internet safety trainings for not just the kids but also the parents so we can learn what to look for because they're always going to be a new, a new app. This is the thing. I hear a lot from parents, which is interesting because I thought it would come from the young people, but I hear a lot from parents say they need their own privacy. I wouldn't go through their phone. Well, it's 2017. 
And this isn't a diary. You're not reading someone's diary. You are protecting your child from predators that are smarter than most people, that know the tactics, that know how to watch. Some of them just friend request and watch in the side, you know, in the background. So not just Timmy, but Margarita. Um, <laughs> Forgot that that was a friend request from a few months ago, right? But then I just texted it or I sent out a thing like, I hate my life, no one understands me. And then all of a sudden this person is my best friend. What happened? You know, that's a predator. They're not always gonna just jump out, try to attack. They stay in the background and they wait and they groom and they build trust and then they strike. All right, caseload. So they, I did have to say run away because that's 94% of our cases are teens that walk away, that, that weren't abducted, they weren't kidnapped, they weren't hogtied. They, you know, these are kids that walked away into the arms of usually a predator, to be honest with you. We live in Las Vegas. They drive around at night, they look at the bus stops, they look through the parks, they look for the kids that are just trying to camp out. Maybe they're, they had bad grades, right? They don't wanna go home. So predators are looking for our kids, um, not just to traffic them, horrible things. Some, you know, trafficking is horrible in itself, but we're talking about people running the streets to look for children to hurt, okay? Um, endangered means there were 13 and younger. So a lot of our cases, um, thankfully, aren't of the little guys. The little guys are a lot more protected, right? Society, we're like, oh my gosh, she, she's seven, you know? She, why is she walking around Walmart by herself? That's our instinct. Well, we don't think the same thing about a 13 year old, right? So that's the problem. We need to protect them just as much as we do the little guys. Toy section at Walmart is not a daycare center. The game section at Target is not a daycare center. Um, it drives me crazy, but I only know this because I learned it. But before I learned it, I probably would have been that parent that was like, okay, play your video game. I'm gonna go get, uh, toilet paper, right? We can't do that anymore, okay? Because we walk away from that baby, that teen, that teenage boy, that 13-year-old girl, that eight-year-old, that five-year-old, and you're asking for trouble, okay? They're so conniving. Just come with me really quick. There's a story you guys can Google it and it'll break your heart, so I'm gonna just tell you right now. Single mom shopping, overwhelmed, has a lot of little guy's running around she seems overwhelmed but she's shopping she's doing her thing very nice man it's like oh i just lost so and so you remind me of my daughter can i buy you your groceries it would just mean the world to me he groomed them he wa he watched them later on when you look at the surveillance video from walmart he was watching them the whole time to see how he could get in there her guard dropped she just thought it was going to be one of those posts like today i got a two thousand dollar tip right those wonderful posts that we see on facebook and we're like that's so nice so he's like, I'm gonna buy everything, I'm gonna buy your groceries because my, you know, my daughter passed away and you remind me of her. Took his time, then says, hey, are you guys hungry? I wanna buy you something to eat. I'm, I'm gonna go grab some McDonald's. Okay, yeah, that's great, right? She's already like, this is the best day ever. Which in a perfect world, it could have been. So he goes, walks away and says like, the little one, the, she's actually the oldest, but she's little, I think she's five. Very outgoing, very wild, just, innocent, beautiful baby. He's like, I'll go with you. He never makes it to McDonald's. He walks outside with her and they find her in the dumpster dead. We can't live in a world where that isn't something we think about because our babies are too precious and the predators are too smart and we can stop that from happening by watching. Even the way I feel is like, man, if I would have been at Walmart, would I, have, would I have noticed what he was doing? Probably not, probably not. So just being more aware and more protective, and it's, I can't chance my baby's not coming home because I wanna make this stranger feel good about himself. You know what, it's really nice that you offered that. <laughs> I would love to take your money, but never let anybody leave with your kids. Always go with your gut, um, and you can protect them faster and longer, you know?
What a great lunch and learn. You guys are awesome. Does anybody have any other questions? The group is always good as their leader. You stop it. Oh my. Aw. Goodbye. That was sweet.